Welcome to the first part of this series on motorcycle dynamics. Now in this video we'll be introducing the basics of wheelbase, rake and trail. And these are fundamental dimensions that define how a motorcycle behaves and handles on the road. So by the end of this video you'll understand what they are, how they're measured and why they're important. And why we'll be building a calculator to explore these basic yet important parameters in more depth. So let's get started. So we'll start with the most simple frame, the hardtail. Now a hardtail is a motorcycle with no rear suspension and this makes it really easy to analyze. Start with the basics. You'll usually find all of these parameters on the website in the chassis or dimension specifications. So let's first consider the wheelbase. Now this is the most simple to understand by name. It is simply the distance between the base of the wheels. So we take this measurement from the center of the front and rear wheel contact patches, not the direct line between the wheel axles. That is because, as you can see, we also take note of the rear and front wheel radius. Now, if the wheels are not the same diameter, which they rarely are, then this line will not be parallel to ground and it won't be an accurate measure. So how does this affect the motorcycle's handling? Well, let's take a simple comparison between a cruiser or chopper style bike that typically have a longer wheelbase compared to a street or sports bike, which are usually quite short. Well, firstly, with a longer wheelbase, you would expect to have a wider turning circle, making this type less agile in contrast with a bike with a shorter wheelbase, which will have a tighter turning circle, which of course is an important factor for sports bikes, aiding in them being more responsive and nimble on track. The benefits of the longer wheelbase then comes in the straight line stability, even at higher speeds, which implies that sports bikes then are less stable on straight lines or at high speeds. Now, when we think of stability here, we're also considering how the motorcycle responds to external forces or bumps. Now, I think tank slappers are a fair example. Whilst they can happen with cruisers, they are far less common. So taking a closer look at the front end, we usually have an offset from the steering axis to the forks. And this will vary between models and the ranges vary more by type. And you'll even see a rearward offset, especially in the case of choppers. Now this offset is usually built into the triple clamps, but in some cases you might also find an offset built into the fork lowers. So now when we consider the offset along with the rake angle and the wheel radius, we directly affect the last of the parameters, which is the trail, which we'll come back to in a moment. The next we'll consider rake angle. This is the angle of the headstock relative to an imaginary vertical line. Now with a larger or shallower rake angle, we're going to have a much more stable motorcycle, especially in regards to straight line stability. What that means is any disturbances or external inputs are going to have less effect on the motorcycle. The downside of this, however, is that it's even more difficult for the rider inputs to have an effect. And we can see evidence of this in the design of the motorcycles. So if we take a chopper or a cruiser, for example, they may have a very large, shallow rake angle. But to counter that, they typically have quite long handlebars as well. And what that does is it gives the rider some extra leverage to apply more torque into the steering axis. And then for sports, street and adventure touring bikes, we usually have a steeper rake angle. And this is generally to increase responsiveness. And in some cases, they can even be too responsive or unstable. And that's why there are a lot of steering dampeners on the market. Now, a common everyday example of how rake angle affects stability is to think about your shopping trolley. All of the wheels are basically on a vertical axis and they all just vibrate and rattle like crazy. So trail is the measurement between where the steering axis intersects the ground back to the center of the front wheel contact patch. We can see that this value will change in relation to the rake angle offset or wheel radius. And bear in mind, this is in a static state. When riding, we'll experience dive and squat, for example, which means we'll have shifting weight distribution and changes in suspension travel. And as a result, all of this will affect the geometry of the bike with rake angle now being a variable parameter. 
I like wheelbase and rake angle. The greater the trail value, generally the more stable the bike will be, which will be ideal for straight or sweeping roads. So between the different types, we'll see how these values are manipulated and tuned for the particular desired performance. So for the sports bike, rake and wheelbase should be short for agility. And with a standard wheel size, the trail value can then be increased then with the offset. For a cruiser or chopper, it's like we tune everything to the max with a long wheelbase and a shallow rake angle, resulting in a potentially overly long trail. And this is an example of where negative offset can be used to pull back the trail value, making it easier for ride inputs to be transmitted. Then what would you expect for adventure bikes and tourists? Well, especially for adventure bikes, these can often have larger wheels, meaning that you can achieve a greater trail value with a steeper rake angle. Now, the kind of characteristics that this would present then would be a motorcycle with greater stability from the trail, but being more agile and easy to turn and navigate those uneven roads due to the steeper rake. Now, I've mentioned that we are simplifying this frame. So, if we look at hardtail, we can see we simply have a triangle. And with that triangle, we have one variable length. Now, in order for this length to decrease or increase, we must have two variable angles and two variable lengths. So we can easily solve this with basic level maths. So taking it from a hardtail to a direct mounted rear suspension frame, we see that we now have a swing arm to consider. And with that, we have an RSU with the upper and lower mounting point. And importantly is where the RSU connects to the frame and the swing arm as well. The amount of travel at the rear wheel will be different to what we actually see in the RSU. So for a direct mounted rear suspension, we can see we've made it a little bit more complicated with a few more triangles to calculate. More complicated would then be the addition of the rocker linkage. But even then, we can see that we can always break the motorcycle down into triangles. So to simplify things in its simplest form, we are riding a triangle on wheels. And as we had to and complicate the chassis with an RSU and rocker linkage, we end up with a geometry project on wheels. Hence, in the next part, we'll start breaking down a motorcycle frame into triangles and building a calculator. And if that interests you, then please subscribe and follow along.